How you doing? It's Eric Forrest of E-Forrest listening to Agrophobic News. Hey, hey, Miller's here. Well, welcome to another episode of Agoraphobic News, this time with Mr. Eric Forrest of e Hello, so, sir. How are you? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate this. Interesting. Uh, I mean, uh, how are you coping with this virus thing? Oh, this uh, conspiracy, manipulation, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, I think day by day, like everybody else, but I just would hope people that are informed that what the hell's going on right now is not just a virus, not that I'm a professional speaker for whoever, but, uh, you know, day by day, right? I, that's about it. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, you know, in the South of France at the moment and it's, we just got out at another, you know, till 11th of May to speed in this lockdown and watch this chaos unfold best we can. Eh? Yeah. And uh, you're in Toulouse, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how is the situation in France? Uh, it's it's pretty, you know, crazy. You see a lot of people getting a lot of tickets and stuff the last couple of weeks. Last week or so, it's not so bad, I'm, you know, but it's a bit, you know, like you put yourself in this position. We're like right out of a, in a movie completely, you know, <laughs> and the whole 1984 thing has come back. Or it's really, you know, real surreal reality in a sense. So, yeah. I don't know. I could go on for hours about this because I've watched, <laughs> I've watched a lot of videos and stuff and uh, discovered a few things and the higher power and the elites and all that. And it, it all comes down to that. Whoever doesn't know that, it does. Point. Yeah, but I think that, you know, 1984 is, uh, you know, outdated book. You know, some somebody needs to write another book because we're living into this world, you know, even a long time ago, you know. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know, just the whole conspiracies, and I've, I've watched some in- interesting interviews on professional people that know what they're talking about, and the whole virus thing. Well, there's been a few other viruses, but they weren't so successful. And it seems like this is happening, and this, and this, and that, and and, and then uh, Bill Gates stuff, and wow, well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 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 a real f- fucking surreal thing, and uh, as we're looking at, and like you know, uh, what's the best way to do it? I don't know. Just be aware of the reality and you know day by day i guess for everybody survival of the fittest in a way yeah yeah and i think like that it will have even greater political and economic uh, effects rather oh. than you know, oh of though. course for sure for sure that's part of the plan absolutely <laughs> unfortunately not to, you know i've you know seen like i said did my bit of research on this and come to the conclusion conclusion is not just the uh the virus that's going down here mm. yeah and uh, are you working on a new e force album maybe? yeah i have been for like the last year and a half it's it's slowly coming we have like about eight or nine songs recorded we just got one 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 song in a bit to to finish and well it's it's a lot that's a lot of work you know like any, <laughs> you know artist musician can tell you it's all great when it's all finished and packaged and everything but yeah i'm working on a new one called mindbender which kind of kind of ironic enough fits this subject of this current world state at the moment despite it can link to other situations of life and the, the mindset of the human race and the feelings of good bad sad ugly and all that stuff so uh yeah i'm doing that and hope to uh, have that released hopefully later this year on mighty records out of uh copenhagen but uh awesome. we're still working that up but uh yeah so i'm happy that when it's finished <laughs> you know awesome man and uh how many songs do you have uh well there's like maybe there's 10 or 10 or 11 yeah one piece some little acoustic part i'm, I'm kind of reminiscent to uh the song called the day after on the the uh demonical album and we're doing a special cover of a special band which i'll remain to be a secret until its release but i don't think it's too hard to figure out <laughs> <laughs> great man i mean I, i'm glad to hear that and, uh, we have some questions from the fans and uh, oh great this, yeah 
Trauma and Catharsis guy asks, Hi Ari, greetings from Italy. I hope you're doing fine. Can you talk about your experience with Voivod? Were you a fan? How did you feel back then? So uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, w- I, was, uh, I was a fan, uh, you know, I remember funny, funny, real funny story. I mean, I remember seeing uh, that video for Ravenous Madison, and I really liked that, you know, that intro riff or whatever, or when it gets going and stuff. And I and I kind of stole a, stole an influence and kind of had a song. And if you listen to a song, uh, one of the songs that never made the album, but a song called Vortex, which is on the Chronic album, is a very riff that's reminiscent. And I, you know, show Piggy in a way this, hey, what do you think of this? And they like. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cause I ripped it off of you guys. So now it's gone full circle. Great. Awesome. So <laughs> I think they liked it and kind of used that. Uh, yeah, I was a fan before, I think like everybody to a degree and the opportunity to audition and, and meet those guys and make it happen was just overwhelming and, uh, turned out okay in a lot of ways for me. So. Yeah. And uh, how did it happen? I mean, how did uh, they ask you to join the band? Well, I, I, I'd known the ex-manager, Pierre Paradis, for a few years before through an uh, acquaintance of my drummer in Toronto called Jeff Salem. Uh, and funny enough, uh, he was managing and Jeff was playing in a, for a little bit in this band called Saints and Sinners and an old band I used to play with Thunder Circus, supported them in Toronto. And uh, the ex-manager seemed like my ex-girlfriend, Rhonda Towles, who was kind of Pam Anderson-like, blah, 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 long story short. She was supposed to send some pictures, and I sent some stuff and some video, you know, some my work. Just hey, if anything comes up, let me know. And then he contacted me later and said, "Hey, uh, there's a band. It's not Judas Priest or Iron Maiden, but it's it's big. Would you be interested?" And I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" So uh, they they called. He called me and said, "Come down uh, to Montreal because I was living in Toronto at the time and do the audition. Just show up, and uh, after we jam for like you know maybe." 10, 15 minutes, not really a specific song or nothing, just jam. They could feel my vibe and whatnot. And that's it. They said, okay, that's it. You're, you're in the band. So let's go have a, be- let's go have a beer. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> this is a dream. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of, it kind of worked like that. And, and of course, you know, day by day, uh, uh, year by year, it was, you know, I was following their lead and was adding my piece to what was already, uh, you know, created and whatnot. And, uh, Hindsight, it, it seemed to to work in a bit. I think those guys, you know, kind of took a chance and said, "Well, let's see what happens." And so, you know, unlike you know, in a smaller scale, of course, but when you look at you know David Coverdale's work or Glenn Hughes's work with Deep Purple, it's not the original or thing, but there's no doubt that there was some good music made. And you know, yeah, like absolutely. That. And uh, how challenging was for you to replace Snake on vocals and Black on bass? Well, it was a big deal, absolutely. But, you know, I just kind of went in with it with, you know, doing what I did and doing what I do and just went for it. And they kind of, you know, work with it and said, okay, kind of sings like this. He's got this. Okay, let's, let's kind of, you know, create this album like Megatron and the Bobos and stuff as naturally as we could and then on, honest as we could and take all the elements like when you're cooking or whatever and put it in the, the recipe and voila. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really, really think about it too much of, 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 uh, oh, how's it going to be or this, I, I guess I, I just really just went for it and people liked it great. And if they didn't, then hey, I understand, you know, from yeah. the other bands, other people have favorite singers in the band or whatever, but I gave it an honest shot and, uh, well, the rest is, I guess, history. Yeah. And, uh, whose idea was, uh, you know, f- to switch the sound of Voivo towards the more groove oriented, uh, you know, sounds because it sounds like, you know, Pantera, uh, Fear Factory and other groove metal bands. I mean, on well, one I guess so was the time, you know, I was what, 94, 95. And that was kind of the vibe that was happening. I think, I think what I joined, they could see what I could do, and I think you know. I think we went once to uh, I think it was Napalm Death Machine Head and somebody else, and did hang out. And it's just like I think they just like, yeah, let's make a heavy record. I'm like, yeah, cool, right on, because I prefer the more heavier stuff anyway. 
and not to, you know, this angel rat or Tyler Dennis, that was the previous stuff. So I think it kind of, if you come full circle for them in a sense that, hey, it's time to do heavy record and go with this. And, uh, you know, kind of like that, right? Yeah, and uh, what is like the idea behind the Negatron album in terms of lyrics? Uh, well, about being, you know, I guess, I think like a way said before, is there was some similar influences that the video guy, how he had his vision and the ion thing is, is surrounded by negative particles and energy. It was the kind of thing like that, like all the concepts and ideas was, was a way his idea. And, you know, we would go write the lyrics and stuff and uh, basically he could answer it better <laughs> that's for sure but it was it was something to that extent and talking about negative energy from you know going in i guess against the grain in a sense because i think uh a lot of people were like well you know it's not a snake da, 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 and whatnot but in the end you know it turned out pretty interesting and surprising for us in the band and for the fans. So, yeah. And did you have like a strong negative uh, criticism from the Snake fans? You know, when you I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think so. I think that there's well, a lot of people are overbited and they, they dub get it. And I think they really appreciate appreciate the fact that. The, 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 the new Boy Boy record and the style was back to more heavier stuff in a sense, as opposed to the previous few records before. So, like I say, you know, as they've always done different albums in a sense, every album in this way, uh, it, 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 you know, it kind of turned into that. And, you know, wanna... yeah. And uh, what was it like working with Piggy? Piggy was uh, was you know quite a, quite an amazing person. Uh, he was like a really easygoing cartoon character sometimes, and then times he could be you know he's very intelligent with his knowledge and this you know from guitars, from songwriting to this to sounds to everything. So it was an honor and privilege definitely to work with him in any way. Um, uh, yeah, I mean Piggy, we used to hang out a lot too after you know downtime with a close friend Sylvain Chesse. Tabernacle, and uh, you know, a great, an, an amazing individual. Lived and learned a lot from that guy, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, his, his style and what he did is uh, still, you know, a very influential, very influential today amongst a lot of people. And why not? Yeah, I mean, his legacy is just, you know, mind blowing to say the least. And uh, who yeah. are you? Touring with uh, during the Negatron era. Uh, Negatron, we toured with. Uh, uh, the first tour was uh, in Europe. We toured with Bengal Power Expression, and that was Mark Guru of Morgoth, who's got a new band, uh, Insidious. Uh, what's it called? Insidious something. I forget. Talk my head, but yeah, we did. We did a tour with them. I don't know, 30 shows in Europe, and then we did uh, a run in the States headlining, and then we eventually toured with uh, Propane and a band called Crisis, with uh, uh, the infamous Karen Crisis from uh, Crisis. And, uh, well, it's long ago, it's hard, it's hard to remember everything. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know, 150 shows, something like that, and then it was, you know, I think, Propane asked us to do another European tour right now. We want to do a new record and stuff. And and I can't remember all of them, but I uh, think for Negatron, that's about it. I know we, you know, did some other stuff in Phobos with, uh, uh, actually, we, on the Negatron day, we, we did play uh, with Merciful Fate, which was pretty good, maybe four or five shows or something in near New York. That was pretty cool. Uh, I remember all of them. Uh, it's, it's hard to uh, take it in at once, but uh, yeah, it's still cool to see bands remember back in the day. Like, uh, uh, anyway, some bands out of you know still going and good to see and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, this uh, Phobos album is a part of this uh, Voivod saga. You know about this nuclear vampire. 
and it's like the yeah. sixth chapter of the story. So, can you explain what exactly is going on on the album? Because I couldn't find much information about it. Well, once again, we could probably explain that better, but I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it was the end our character come back to life, basically, and goes through many different phases throughout the story. And, you uh, know, it's just hard for me to explain, you know. Other than that, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say <laughs> at the moment. Other, other than, yeah, as, with, you know, the science fiction character. But I guess there's similar relations to the name Anarch and the Anarchy and that uh, Egyptian story of the Anarch or whatever. I forget the name, but it's kind of really like that. I think, you know, like I said, it was, it's in a way his, uh, his, uh, his ideas to create the concepts and, and the storyline. And yeah, to have that story be part of that album was, was incredible. Absolutely. And uh, did you write these lyrics, or was that uh, always lyrics? Uh, uh, the, the, all the subjects on Phobos record were always ideas. I mean, I come up with I think I come up with Planet Hell the idea, Thai song title, all all his ideas on on Agatron, all his ideas for the subject, this song, the song, the song, and whatnot. And yeah, I would co-wrote them with him and. He gave me a bit of information about it, and then I would take it from there, and then we would, you know, okay, this fits, this fits, and so, you know, something like that. That's how it was always done. Yeah. And uh, whom did you tour with uh, during this Phobos tour? Oh, I remember we did some few shows with a few headliner shows, tours. We did some shows, I think, with Overkill. Uh, maybe Neurosis, all that was later. Um, wow, that's going back. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't really remember at the time. Yeah, I, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the shows think... were club headliners or whatever, and then local support acts in, in each city, and whatnot. But, uh, I, I don't really remember, funny enough. Yeah, but I remember you know, the big it's... ones throughout the career, but uh, some of the other ones, I, I, I don't. Enough. Yeah, Enough. and I think that you know this. If if you were touring with Neuroses, that's like crazy, because they they're such a great band, you know. Yeah, yeah, we did that in nine, I think ninety nine. Yeah, and then uh, we did tour Syrian, and yeah, obviously ninety nine. The biggest one was supporting our maiden in Canada, doing three shows with those guys, which is a real dream come true for any band, I suppose, and. Yeah, but uh, the photos I don't really remember that much. Yeah. And uh, remind, do you remember this band? Yeah, that band. Yeah, yeah, but, you know. yeah, yeah. Sorry. In uh, 1998, you, the, the band had a, a van crashed on the road in Germany. Yeah. So, yeah. what the fuck happened? Yeah, exactly. What the fuck happened? Um, well, it was August 4th, 98. We're on our way to the Wacken Festival to play. And uh, we're going down the Autobahn. I don't know exactly where. And the tire blew and, and the band and the thing rolled. And the next thing I know, I'm in the, um, on the side of the, the highway and like, not what the fuck's going on. And yeah, it was kind of a blur. Like, what's happening here? It was a real brutal situation for, you know, I think he was injured too, obviously, me a little more. But, yeah, it was quite a quite a trip, that, and, and being in a coma for like a week. Uh, yeah. Seeing a lot of weird shit and, you know, making it out alive and, and coming back and then, you know, getting back into the groove and those guys still, you know, supporting me and stick around. And then that's when we, you know, kind of did that unreleased uh a uh, 10 song album which we're supposed to record with Steve Albini in Chicago and then kind of things could you know kind of changed but uh yeah that was uh about 20, 20 years ago 22 years ago already yeah so yeah I'll never forget that no absolutely not and uh how long it took you to recover oh probably well a coma and they flew me back to Canada 
which is on a private jet. That was pretty weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, real rock star, right? And uh, yeah, I was in the hospital there with more more surgeries and then like uh, more stuff. And so I don't know, maybe like four or five months. Yeah. Damn. I kind of and- I kind of learned yeah I kind of learned how to walk again and you know it was it was all a blur and you know it's it's where when you hear stories of this from other people and you can look at it but when it's you that's on the inside it's it's a weird 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 you know situation I can recall being in a coma and seeing Piggy in a way and those guys like there and I'm like. I don't know. I had like a body, a body experience, and soul, or whatever. And I'm waving, like, going, "Hey, hey, guys, hey, 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 hey!" But oh, no shit. one's listening. They, they didn't. Yeah, you know what I mean. Some, some weird shit like that happened. But fortunately, uh, you know, things came out okay in a sense that I can still walk, rock, and uh, be good to the girlfriend on a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, not being paralyzed or whatever. You get it, right? And uh, did you recover like 100% or? No, no, I didn't. No, I uh, I broke my back in a couple spots in my lower spine. I don't know the exact uh, numbers, sort of the bone structure, or whatever. But it's still, you know, I'm still handicapped in in a, in a degree. And some days are good, some days are bad. But like I said, I can still walk, rock, and keep it happening. I'm still alive, and I've never never stopped. So. You know, never surrender, yeah. right? Definitely. And uh, we have one uh, question from the fan. Steve Krause asks, what words of perseverance would you share with musicians recovering from accidents or those who may be questioning the future of their music, especially in our current times of uncertainty on many levels? Well, Steve, I would have to say... Uh... It, it, it's you know I've been doing this thing for a long long time and I don't really have a plan B or C and it's, it's like there's nothing else I know how to do and enjoy doing so I guess I just you know just continue to do what I do best and best way I can basically uh, for the love of the music as it's not just music it's a way of life and you know that's that's what I do. So <laughs> what else can I do, right? You know, I guess I guess it's the only way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, can you explain what's going on on this lost album, which that, that was supposed to be re- recorded by Steve Albini? You know. Yeah. Well, I still got a copy of cassette. I haven't listened to that. Maybe I don't know. Many many years. Uh, one thing I would like to say is I did uh, I did do a cover of the song on one of my E Force records called Modified Poison of a song called Victory, which is one of the songs, and I did that out of out of you know tribute to Piggy, in a sense like hey we brought one of these songs to life it's a victory and a big production and as a tribute to him in a sense, um, like I said uh, it was you know supposed to be recorded and and done but at that point. I think the guys, you know, there was a lot of financial problems and things. They've seen better days, and you know, looking back, hindsight now, of them telling it was over and then coming back with Snake and Jason Newstead. Well, I probably would have done the same thing too, because you know, in a sense, also kind of give Piggy a few victory laps in, in his situation, and it's a tough business. And I always knew that, you know, when you see other bigger bands replace the guy they had with another singer from, you know, from Blaze Bailey to Ripper, Owens, Priest, whatever. It's, I was always aware of that, you know, this is not my band. It never was. I just follow the leader and do, you know, my best. So, yeah, you know, c- kind of something like that. Yeah. And uh, was this uh, final chapter maybe inspired by your accident? Because uh, Away told me that, like Voivod uh, gets into a coma on the on this final yeah chapter. yeah yeah it was kind of based about that um definitely and through not just me but i mean for those guys and for everybody in in the, in the style and I, i'm very grateful that you know we did what we did and you know to try to give a shot and whatnot 
to do that. And, you know, obviously at the time I was a little, a little pissed off not to be in the band anymore, but, you know, looking back now, you know, it's not, to, <laughs> it's a business and whatnot decision to, for them to carry on the way they did and whatnot. And that's cool. That's fine. I understand. You know, I still see this guy here and there some a few years ago in, in France, and I, they invited me to the the, the Hellfest uh, joint snake, singing Tribal Convictions on stage, so that was pretty cool back in 2009. Uh, nice. Nice. But uh, yeah, that, that, that un, unfinished thing was, was about that, in a sense, definitely. Um, when it's going to be released, if it's going to be released, I have no idea. It's not really my position to to say in a sense, uh, yeah. when, if, when, why, but, you know, at the same time, you know, those guys are doing what they're doing now, and, you know, it makes sense for them to keep doing what they're doing now, not to really re go back into this vault and, and release this when they're doing what they, they want to do at the moment, so that's, you know, yeah, and maybe, uh, one, can... day, maybe one day it'll be released, I don't know, I have no idea, but one thing I can tell you is, this uh, this album and recording, the, the guys wanted me to like maybe sing a little more, I suppose, uh, you know. <laughs> so I would have to say that there's, you know, some of that angel rap vibe in there of songs, type of metal, whatever, not not so heavy like the Megatron Phobos. Although when I did do, redo the the Victory song, I did make it maybe sing a little heavier than anticip- than it was, but you know. That was my version of it anyway but so yeah yeah amazing i mean i would love to hear that definitely and uh, this guy jan uh, dobachevsky asks uh, when are you are you guys going to re-release uh, negatron and phobos albums uh actually there's supposed to be a, a re uh, 20th anniversary issue whatever coming out and so they're supposed to re-release the Phobos and Negatron records through Linus Entertainment that's what I've been told but obviously at this point today with all this chaos shit I don't know what uh, what the plans are yeah I mean Away uh, Away told me like that uh, they're planning to release Eric Forrest box set in the future but uh, he wasn't you know he didn't get into much details Right, right. Why? Well, I, I think that, why. But I think that they'll do it eventually. If you're. Yeah. Well, t- this year we're supposed to be we're supposed to re-release that those those two albums, the Bubbles and Megatron. That is correct. Yeah, and uh, but, do you continue, please. So, so you know, with what's happening today, I don't know when when that's gonna happen. But that what I was told last year. That that's supposed to be re-released. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, is that actually the DVD part two or not? I mean, uh, because there, uh, Away told me that this DVD two is going to be, you know, from the Eric Forrest era. Well, I've I've heard a lot about that stuff for many years, but I just kind of sit back and and let what's going to happen happen. That's really not my position to to judge or make a comment or statement about it. So, but yeah, I have been told that, that those are coming out. As far as the DVD or two, whatever, um, there's, you know, a lot of footage, some stuff from, we did, like, we played Dynamo Festival 96. That was a real big ass stage and everything. And a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, but at that, you know, I, I, I don't really know how that's going to happen. At the same time, you know, those guys are pushing their own stuff, what they're doing now. So it kind of doesn't make sense to, go backwards when they're still trying to go forward in a way, you know, I mean, good for me, but well, you know, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Tony Morales says, I still say a Vo- Voivod tour with the set with Eric doing the, that era of Voivod songs and then the, the Voivod with Snake doing another set would be awesome. So what do you think about this? I think it's a fucking amazing idea. I've seen, uh, I think, a couple German bands, funny enough, too. Well, Michael Schenker, I think he's done a few tours with ex-members and different members. And Halloween, uh, I think they've done that, too. I think that would yeah. be a great idea. Amazing idea to do it for with Voivod E-Force and whatever, whatever. And 
I'll give Jason a call too. I mean, <laughs> invite everybody. <laughs> so let's go, you know, and and give that back to the fans because that would that would be, you know, definitely a night to remember seeing all you know the people in Voivod that have been part of it, lucky like too, and you know. That that would be incredible. I think that'd be amazing. Maybe one day before we're all dead, that would you know. I'm not going to say no. That's for sure. But once again, at the same time, it's it's not my position to organize that. And you know, us. yeah, but that, that would good. be like a great footage. Oh, that would be, that, that would be that would be a really amazing uh, situation. Uh, yeah, for that to happen for for the fans, and it would definitely draw some people. Obviously, that's why Halloween and Michael Schenker do it. So. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I mean, yeah. And uh, are you? I mean, I know that you did this Phobos Negatron Negatron revisited tour back in the day. Uh, is is there any possibility that you might do this again? Uh, well, I was kind of at the time. Uh, I was had, had we maybe done like I don't know. 40, 50 shows or something for the Demonico. And I was in a position where some member changes and stuff. And uh, I contacted my producer of 4E Force Records because he's a good friend of mine. He's a drummer. He's like, hey, you know, I'm thinking of I actually went to see uh, one of his bands support uh, Uli John Roth. And Uli John Roth is doing a thing called Corpions Revisited. I'm like, hmm. That's a pretty cool idea. <laughs> so, because I'm between album, I'm kind of between albums, and you know, uh, gives the fans what they want, and if if there there are any that really are interested in, funny enough that there were, we managed to do uh, like 25 shows, nine countries, played the the, the famous Brutal Assault Festival in Czech Republic, and it went really well. Really, you know, people were really into it, and cool enough, they they even sent uh, management in a way they sent the some of the artwork from you know the the Foles album and stuff and said hey if you want to use this go ahead so i thought that was really cool that you know give me the rights to hey go go for it man do it i thought it was really cool not that they're going to use it anymore right now but you know what i mean and i was like okay cool so that was good um to do it again uh it's possible but i after you know after doing those 25 shows, whatever, and it was kind of more, okay, I need to put on a new record, I want to do a new thing, and, you know, so we're at this stage at the moment, but if something else comes up, uh, yeah, I'd definitely consider it, but at the same time, I don't, you know, want to just play Wild Wild songs my career, I want to, you know, do my U4 stuff too, but the both is good, you know. Yeah. As I've always, I've, I've always played a few Wild Wild songs at U4 shows anyway, you know. Yeah. I guess I guess it'd be like seeing you know, Pollyanna <laughs> some place in Maiden, you're gonna <laughs> fucking lose it, right? Or, or Blaze Bailey or whatever or whatever. For that. But I would love but to like see that. that live because you know I really love these two albums because they're you know, the more dissonant and groovy side of Voivod. Yeah, think... yeah. You, you, you and a lot of fans. I mean, we we did some show, we know, eight shows or something in Spain and. I don't know which city it was Salamanca or whatever. One of them. Anyway, there was a guy. He 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 drove like six hours all the way from Portugal to see this fucking show. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, holy fucking Christ, man! I don't even know who would do that for Maiden or Kiss or whatever. And this guy, you know, he's really showing me some identification. He had his is a T-shirt from like 20 years before when he had. It. I was just. I can take the time for this guy. It's 10, 20 minutes, whatever. It's just overwhelmed. Like, wow. Yeah. yeah wow. Definitely. I read that far to see this. You know, it was, I, it was not a big club, but still. Well, he liked it. And everybody seemed to dig it. But yeah, that's a funny story. Yeah. And uh, what was like the last time you saw Piggy? Uh, well, unfortunately, at his funeral. But. Other than that, uh, I guess when I was living in Montreal, I'd seen him, seen him out and about with a friend, Sky G. He used to work with Boy Vaughn, Cradle of Filth and stuff. And I seen him around, hey man, what's going on? So, you know, but other than that, no, I, I, I'd already moved to France and then got some calls when he was in the hospital and stuff like that. So 
I, I wanted to speak with him, but unfortunately didn't, you know, wasn't able to. So, yeah. but that was back in, I don't know, 2001 sometime, 2001, 2002. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, too bad that he died. He was, you know, so young. Yeah, I, I used to call him Riff Master P because you know the guy was a, the guy was a Riff Master. And people, oh, who's, who's Riff Master P? Oh, it's him, you know, because he, he was, you know, he come up with some really cool shit. I remember one one so one solo he did on the Phobos record. I forget what song it is. Maybe Quanta or Quanta. Yeah, I think maybe Quantum or something. He, he's ready to do his guitar solo in the studio, and the guitar is sitting on the couch. Okay, producer guy goes, okay, you ready to go? He's like, or the engineer, he's like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm like, wait, 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 aren't you going to put the guitar in your hand? He goes, no, 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 go ahead, record. And he grabs this fucking, this like vzz, electric <laughs> razor or something. He puts it by the pickup and shit. And yeah, this is going to work. Da, 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 da. I'm just like, what the fuck is that? That's just, I've never seen anybody play guitar like that. And yeah, funny enough. Yeah, it's, it's the, the sound is still there because I know you yeah, like the toy gun and shit through the pickups and live concerts and stuff. But that that was a memorable moment to see him play that. And you know, on another another song which I was I'm still amazed by today is probably one of my favorite Voivod songs that I did with the band it was a song called Project X. And it's yeah. in the solo. The solo is like two notes. Wah, 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 wah. That's it. It's like whoa. I never imagined after, you know, I'm a big mom scene fan and everything, but I never imagined to hear <laughs> two, two notes be so fucking great and fitting for that song. It, it was just like, pff, holy fuck. Yeah, dealing with a legend, that's for sure. Guitar gods, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, do you maybe have some funny story that you can share with us? You know, related yeah. to... Piggy. Yeah, yeah. One I still remember very much. When we played in the Dynamo Festival '96, um, we're we're like uh, behind the, the 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 back line and getting ready. And Piggy's like, "Oh fuck, I forgot the tuner." So he's trying <laughs> he's he's trying to tune the guitars by ear, and it's just blasting and stuff. I'm like, "How the fuck you do that?" And I'm you know I was a bit nervous like that because those guys had done bigger stages like that in their 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 past and and that was kind of my first you know big deal on a stage like that and i'm looking at piggy like dude what are we gonna do and he starts laughing he starts he goes he goes i don't know <laughs> and i'm like no no seriously dude what the fuck are we gonna do he goes i don't know <laughs> i starts laughing more i'm just like and i'm looking around the corner and seeing like fifteen thousand people just two o'clock in the afternoon waiting for us nervous as fuck because we got no tuner we can't even tune the guitars and i just put on new bass strings and shit it's like oh fuck this is a mess <laughs> did you get nervous uh, you know while playing uh, before you know playing uh, this dynamo show because it's it's a huge festival you know with uh, lots of people. Yeah, yeah 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 it was uh it was it was an experience that's for sure but as a nervous yeah yeah i was <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but uh like I said, uh, you know, the whole tuning thing and tuning before the, 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 and seeing Piggy just started laughing and I'm, I'm you know, stressing a bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, you know, once you get on stage and then start letting it go and playing the music, uh, it was, I don't know, we played like four or five minutes. It felt like maybe ten minutes on stage. But, yeah. So, yeah, I guess so. But, you know, I knew it was, you know, get up there and fucking make it happen, man, because a lot of people are watching you and, and for for me, for Piggy Away, and for the fans, and just do do what I was able to do. So there's a few videos on that, and actually uh, some of the the, the album, uh, the Voivod Lives. There's maybe four, five, six songs recorded from that, actually. Yeah, from the, the, the Dynamo Festival, and some tracks from CBGBs in New York, whatever. But yeah. And what was like the biggest? Uh show that you ever did with Voivod? Well, that was one of them, but yeah, definitely with Iron Maiden, playing uh, the Bell Center, I don't know what it's called now, but it's where the Montreal Canadiens play hockey in Montreal. That was probably the, the Mount Everest for me, definitely. <laughs> and it was really special because 
we we did three shows with them and that but th- th- that night like normally when bands play with bigger bands there are, you know they have the 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 dressing rooms for the support band is on the other side of the bill or the side of the venue and then the headliner here but we were like right beside made and walk by and you could see the guys walk by hey i know i sort of I know. <laughs> and once I, i'll never forget this there was on our way to the thing there was this base yeah steve harris's base just sitting there in a stand like i don't know maybe they had it on video camera to see who would touch it but i'm walking by and i was looking at it like holy fucking christ that's it but I, I didn't touch it and i didn't i didn't look at it anymore i kept walking like out of respect because but that that was a real interesting moment you know when you meet those guys and whatnot and uh uh that was probably yeah that was that was the top one i mean uh you know, playing uh, the Whiskey of Gogo or Roxy, the Marquee in London. Uh, I don't know. There's so many, it's hard to remember. But definitely, yeah, the Maiden was probably one of the best ones, absolutely. Definitely. And uh, can you tell me when and how did you start playing bass and, uh, you know, playing music in general? I started playing bass uh, back in September '84. I was really a, a bass player first before a singer, and you know I was in the Maiden shit and Priest and Sabbath and every everything else. And uh, started that, and I could sing a bit, but more of a backup singer. And then I became lead singer and kind of had you know that Halford Dickinson vibe. And it wasn't until maybe. I don't know. Six months before Voivod got me, gave me the audition. I started listening to, or started learning how to sing more of the heavy uh, kind of stuff, the Sepultura's kind of vibe or whatever. And you know, I'm a really big fan of uh, Corey Clark's work and Warrior Soul. He's been a big influence in me, and definitely anybody who doesn't know will go have a listen because I, I probably wouldn't have been the singer I, I am today without his work or influence and in that. Um, so yeah, I started playing yeah '84, and it's been a long time. And I've had this Fender bass I've been playing since 1985. Still got it, so it's kind of nice. And uh, what were like your the biggest uh, bass influences? Oh yeah, definitely Steve Harris for sure. Uh, and, you know, Geddy Lee and Billy Sheen and all that stuff back in the day. Um, but you know, and Sabbath and whatnot. But I think as I get I got older, I realized that, you know, the bass is, as, as Piggy used to say to me in Voivod, he used to say, you know, Eric, the bass supports the guitar in Voivod. Da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, man, as you like, okay, I get it. <laughs> nope. Not to do a lot of little bass lines and stuff during stuff. Well, I was singing at the same time too, so it was a little more difficult. But I really, you know, going back to that song, Project X again, it really, you know, it's very simple bass line. Dun, 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 dun. It's very, you know, kind of simple. And I, I learned that, you know, sometimes creating music, you don't need a million notes or this and that. It's it's the vibe and sometimes the simplicity of it all that gives the biggest, you know, impact. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I, I like all, you know, all styles, all styles of music and all styles of bass playing and all that and shit, for sure. And, uh, you know, like that Victor Wooten guy. I mean, come on, like, <laughs> you know, I, I can't yeah. go there. But, but yeah, I re- really respect it and whatnot. And uh, are you born in Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was. Uh, my 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 parents are from Scotland, Glasgow, and Edinburgh. And get this, yeah, I was born in in Burlington, Ontario, Canada, Friday the thirteenth, nineteen seventy, and I believe that's the first black sabbath album that was released the same day <laughs> yeah so yeah that's that, that the just show, yeah the metal the metal is in my veins and i'm still you know still going so it was meant to be <laughs> awesome and uh how uh, how did you form your own band eforce how did that happen uh well the afternoon when I, me and away walk, I walked back to my place where I was living, and away walked to his place. We had a band, band meeting at Piggy's place, and 
I that day, okay, it's over. Okay, that, 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 that's funny because I remember walking with away and I and I said, hey, why don't you guys give Jason Newstead a call or something? Maybe he can help you out. And he's like, mm, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> so, I think that I think there's maybe some other stuff going on, but whatever. Uh, I I started composing that day, and got some friends uh, from who I knew from from Canada. This guy Dan Lozon from Entropy and an old friend Brian Donnie from Bank on Homicide in the Montreal area. And, you know, started putting some stuff together. And this other guy, Louis Levesque from, uh, from Montreal, who's a drummer, great drummer. And, you know, piece by piece, song by song. And then, uh, yeah, um, we, it's a label called Season of Mist. Uh, Released yeah, the first great. C-Force record, C-Force. So that, that was interesting. It was great. It was a good time and uh, whatnot. And uh, I forgot to ask you about this uh, M-Body song. That, that's like the, the song from the Phobos album, which was uh, written mm -hmm. by Jason Newsted. So yeah, how it was. It, well, that, that, the piggy away, Jason did a thing called Tar Rat, uh, a project called Tar Rat. And I think they did four or five song demo kind of thing. And I think Piggy maybe more wrote more of that musically than Jason did, but they're Jason's lyrics and all that. And so, yeah, when we uh, did another song or something was like that, they said, well, we want to do this. It's cool to you. I'm like, is it cool to me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a great tune. It's a great, great fucking song. It's a really, I really like it, man. I mean, I added that one to that one. I did that Boyfod Revisited thing a few years or a year ago, whatever, two years ago. Uh, we put that one in the set, too, and fans liked it. So and it's part of it. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I mean, those guys were friends with him from back in the Fawesome days. So for him to end up being on, you know, a couple of Boyfod records, it's, in a sense, no surprise. In a way, considering yeah. you know he wasn't in Metallic anymore or whatever, but but yeah, great tune and uh, yeah. And I forgot to ask you, how many songs did you cover from this Lost Voivod album? Two or more? Uh, the Lost Voivod, the one that hasn't been released, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just did one song, one one cover, one uh -huh. song called Victory. Just one, because yeah, it's yeah. not you know, it's not really my place to go out and, and like for my next record to go go take a song off that and go redo it or whatever. No, no, it's 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 what is what's done's done. And like I said, I did it at a for Piggy right as a tribute to Piggy, but I you know I haven't touched any of that stuff or I haven't even listened to it maybe ten fucking year ten fifteen years. It's been a while. But uh, like I did say, I, I do plan to, uh, on my next C-Force record, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a cover of uh, a, a sort of famous song in a famous band. So I think you can read between <laughs> the lines what it could be, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, can you may maybe name uh, some of your favorite albums? Let's say like top five heavy metal albums. Ooh, top five, ah, Iron Maiden Killers, Bonded by Blood, Exodus. Uh, I really love uh, Warrior Soul, Space Age Cowboys, Space, Space Age Playboy, sorry. Uh, uh, Deep Purple, uh, In Rocks, I think it's called. Um, one more. Yeah. Mm, I like Shout Out the Devil Motley Crew, believe it or not. <laughs> I mean, I, I I never listened to that band because, you know, no. I was, yeah, I was like a lot of into trash and uh, I I had this antagonism towards the glam music, you know, even Guns N' Roses, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Appetite Destruction is a good one, too. And uh, ACDC, there's so many bands I'd have to add into that. I really love the seventies music, something lazy stuff too. It's really I don't know. The seventies stuff seemed to 
a lot of the music seems to be more you know different from today's market i guess but as it should be different but uh you know well, a, a lot of 70s music was great you know yeah like it, it was like more progressive with more keyboards and uh, i think uh, you know a lot of great uh, jazz fusion came out from the 70s and it was mm, a great time <laughs> oh yeah 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 for sure even for the sound yeah. stuff or whatever yeah, yeah. And, uh matthew key sweeter asks uh, i got into voivod when i was in high school when phobos came out i would only learn later how some old fans had trouble with the transition to negatron did any resi- any of that resistance come into the play come into play in writing phobos uh, wh- on one hand it is a little less harsh more like haters than killing technology but is also not for the faint of heart i think it is voivod's best record and so unlike any anything else out there yeah like i explained already on the thing but uh same kind of thing that it really changed my per- per- perception or whatever or not really because i just you know did what you know what i knew how to do best and let the pros uh guide the ship or you know put their 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 vision into focus really so yeah you know it wasn't really my you know decision okay we're going to have this and snap but have that being said like at the time you know in the 90s and stuff to have all those sounds that uh i think a guy named James Cavaluzzo did from Toronto he he did all those the sounds and stuff on the album yeah okay 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 yeah and uh, and, the uh sec- yeah continue please all right guys just yeah. thanks uh so yeah i i just kind of did what i had to, what i did and you know they let you know followed their lead basically Yeah. Did it have an influence? I I you know, you'd have to ask away that too at the same time, right? Because you probably have another version of it, but from my <laughs> perspective, I, you know, just did yeah. what I did and voila. <laughs> and uh, that, you know, helps. Matthew also asks, uh, what's the origin of the band's connection with Jim Thir- Thirlwell? Jim Thirlwell. Thirlwell. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Why? Uh, who appears on Negatron? Did his music have an influence on the industrial soundscape aspects of Phobos? Yeah, I got that one too. Um, yeah, I, I, Jim Thurwall, while he, you know, the band Fetus and stuff was pretty legendary in a sense of, from what a way he used to tell me, more, he's kind of the godfather of rock of the industrial thing, you know, like really influenced the Nine Inch Nail Manson thing. And... Yeah. He he knew him, and I met him once in New York City, and then when we played in CBGB's once, another time, he came up and we played uh, the DNA, in fact, on stage. <laughs> Funny <laughs> enough. And I didn't even know what the fuck's going on. I'm like, oh, I don't even know. What doing. I don't know. And Piggy's like, just play an E. It's okay. Or whatever. So I remember <laughs> that. So I just played the bass in E, and then Jim came up and did it. And, and then, you know, way went to his place actually to do the recording and help or just aid whatever uh, you know jim wrote the lyrics for that tune and that but interesting funny story about uh his uh meeting with him but at least let him tell you that story <laughs> but uh yeah so yeah uh, i don't really know i don't really know jim throw at the time to be honest i mean i waited and piggy for sure but Yeah. yeah. And the last question, uh, what is like Planet Hell song really about? What inspired you to write this one? Well, I did come up with the title. Uh, as you can tell by the song, it is a bass line that starts the song and and it was yeah, it was my idea and the piggy took it from there and then added his little King Crimson influence part, I guess in some spot and then what well, they they I had an idea and they took it and took it where it needed to go. But 
the planet how I guess in the world that we live in as we see it and that this was you know composed in the mid 90s but I guess it depends on one perspective what you know planet how it is World War two before this that now whatever so kind of uh, a bit of a you know chaos war and a bit of a description of what what's kind of going on then and always has been in a sense from what we know yeah, yeah. and it's about chemical weapons digital combat and all of that you know crazy stuff yeah 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 nuclear war basically in a way hey that sounds familiar right <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. half of the boy was discography is about nukes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. I sent an email. I sent. I don't know if it's off the record. It's off the record. But I sent away a, an email of, of 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 YouTube of that David Ike Ike mm -hmm. David Ike whatever. I'll send it to you if it's still on the net. But yeah, he talks all about the new car, the, the virus, and what's going on today, and this and that. The whole elite power, one percenters dictating the world, and politicians probably talks all about that. But. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of related. It's kind of funny because, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, you, you have a little listen of a little uh, video of one of my new tunes called Provocation. Not not the first one, the second one. Did you hear that? I heard the the, la the latest. The last one. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the, the, the I sent you a video, a little thing on the messenger. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, I, I checked it out. I checked it out. Yeah, both. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So it's funny because, a lot, like I said before, the, a lot of those songs are, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, 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 you know, it's funny because this is what's happening now. And it's funny how some of the words and some of the stuff, it's like it could totally be linked to this completely. And it or intentionally wasn't, but <laughs> listening to the lyrics, so isolation, this, this, that. So holy fuck, I'm impressed, man. Yeah, yeah but that's, yeah, that's that what's our that's what art is all about i mean uh, sure song, sure songs you know come to life and then uh, they have a life of its own and yeah, sometimes exactly. they get relevant you know people call it predictive programming but what happens is that you know you have some topic that is relevant right now and all the people all right are like oh they predicted it no but they were talking about it then you know but it's still yeah. relevant in a way yeah, I know what you mean. Like a lot of people now are going to write songs about this virus right now, and this is like there's m many other artists that did this kind of shit before, many years yeah, ago. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the yeah, whole yeah, thrash yeah. metal scene. Yeah, you know. yeah. So who's going to have the best c c carnivorous album concept going <laughs> when it's all released? <laughs> <laughs> who's going to have the best? Yeah. Let's just yeah. everybody call it the same title, and then we can compare <laughs> it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it will surely, you know, have an impact on heavy metal, not not in in terms of lyrics, but you know, in touring and all of that shit, you know. Oh, the delays, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I, I was, you know, very mad. Not mad, but like a bit. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm trying to put this album together. This and that. The time. This and that. And then you know how this business works. Everything's six months in advance, seven months in advance, and then this, and then this. It's like. Okay, well, I, I'm not. I didn't spend you know X amount of dollars on a tour already that I'm not going to get my money back from. So I'm kind of. It's not so bad. <laughs> Look at it that way. Yeah, and, and this that ticket really master nothing. shit. Did you mm -hmm. see that? The, the, what, the what? Ticket master. I mean, they. they oh yeah, they're not giving the tickets back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 good. What is so they save the interest and keep the money and then. Like, oh. Anybody but can say what they want now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And I saw like a title that, uh, I, I don't know, some news article that uh, maybe there will be no concerts until 2021, which is, you know, scary enough for the musicians. Yeah, yeah. Here there's already talk like the Hellfest and the Grass Pop and I think the Walken for sure. It's going to be canceled this year. And for small little bar club gigs or whatever, you know, I, I don't know when that's going to happen, but seeing how I, you know, do play in a cover band to make some money here and there. 
and hopefully it's going to start soon. <laughs> you know? but, yeah. Uh, money. I mean, crazy. It's just crazy, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know what you're saying. It's, uh, everybody's in a shock, but everybody knows the, the you know the deal, right? What's going on with this? I, the whole one percenters, the top people manipulating to the government to tell the public, blah 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 blah. The Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and the money, and you know about that, eh? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Okay, because uh, do some homework because if you don't know, because other people, they don't know. They don't get it. They think, why is this? Oh, it's China's fault. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 you know, there's more involved than just China, let's just say. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's global. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, thank you for your time. I'm really sorry about yeah, this. But... Yeah. No, no, it's, it's cool. It's, it's good to chat. You know, I'm here. I'm just I'm so, I have some few guests over here, hanging out a bit and killing the time, listening to some music, drinking some beers and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure. And it's cool to see some of these, I, you know, this, these questions funny because these questions you ask me, these people already asked me on the Facebook and I'm answering it deja already on the world, world's yeah, away, yeah, what, what, yeah. Michelle's thing, but it's cool to, you know, get it all and whatnot on a free interview or whatever. And definitely send me the link for sure. I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm really That's sorry. True. I apologize about not answering the maybe the, the accurate Fobos questions you're asking, but you'd have to ask the chef on that one. In his, I mean, I did. Science, I, I scientific did ask... science level. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I already did an interview about it with the way, and he gave me some details because okay. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna release this huge article about it. So, okay. Okay, yeah, because I did see uh, snakes, because I recognized the font when I saw the picture. I'm like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, okay, because you interviewed snake already and away, yeah, at the same yeah. time, or okay, no, it was like a separate interview, but I interviewed okay. them okay. like I did an interview with away in 2017, and then with snake and away in 2000. 18 or 19 i don't remember and oh, i did wow. like two interviews with dan mongrain so thank you once again for your okay time. man you know for sure man keep 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 me posted and i'll keep you updated what's going on i'm, I'm gonna be doing a, a podcast stuff soon and getting some of the shit organized with some more uh social uh media stuff and starting announcing that and probably the next couple weeks to get things you know trying to network and stuff but i'll keep please keep in touch and let you know what's going on yeah amazing so okay. thank you so much and uh, have a nice okay, day good luck good luck with you guys and your family and friends and everything okay man thank you just goodbye ciao bye, bye hey people i hope you enjoyed this episode of agoraphobic news Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us grow. You can also support us on Patreon by becoming one of our patrons. And big shout out to our patron Season of Mist for supporting our work. So stay tuned for another interview and keep it metal.